Hi everybody, welcome back to another video at Smithsdale Farm. In our last video, we started closing in the walls of our cabin build project on our property here in the mountains in Spain. We also began the slightly daunting task of protecting our future home from the elements and started to make it watertight. Now, as the hot summer starts to cool a little bit, we're able to actually work in the midday without dying. So there are a few tasks around the land that we want to get going with. We're Danny and Kate, and this is Paco. We recently bought 12 acres of land in the Spanish mountains. Follow the journey as two DIY novices with tons of enthusiasm, but not quite as much know-how. Renovate a small stone barn into the tiny house of our dreams and bring the land back into full production. But first, before we rip the roof off our brand new home, we need somewhere to stay. Welcome to the Cabin Build series. A few months ago, we started a propagation technique with our fig tree. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on how that's doing. We're trying a technique called air layering, where you create a root ball on the actual living stem of the plant. So you don't remove any of the plant, you actually leave it attached to the main plant. And then you grow the root ball around part of one of the major branches. Once the roots have formed, you then take that off and transplant it and bring it on in its own pot. So we're just at the stage now where we're actually taking one off the plant because we're gifting it to a friend. So I'm going to pot that up and show you how the roots look and everything like that. Um, but I thought I'd just show you the other ones on the plant and how they're doing. They've been tightly wrapped um, to keep them dark so that the roots have a good environment to grow um, and they've been like this for a couple of months now. So you can see all the little roots that have grown inside here and they'll be ready to propagate the new plant. This one is actually quite a large branch and you can see that the plant is really, really healthy. It's got lots of foliage on it. So we think that one's going to do pretty well. This is the one that we're going to give to our friend. And you can see that we're just um, soaking the roots a little bit. The soil that we actually propagated it in um, was very very poor quality soil it was just the soil that we had here from the land we didn't use any compost or anything um, and you can see that the roots have still grown really really well so what we're doing is we're just giving it a really good soak getting rid of all of that kind of bad quality soil and then we're going to pot it up with some compost I've just started with some rocks in the bottom for drainage and then I'm going to be putting some good quality compost in there I'm going to put a layer of compost on the bottom first, then put in the plant, and then kind of plant around it. So this weekend we've got a little project which is making some steps that come down from where we park the car. Um, every time we arrive we use this this pathway to get everything into the house um, in which we have cleared a little bit since we've been here but not really and sometimes when it's dark um, as it's starting to get darker now it's a little bit um, you know hazardous when you're carrying 20 litres of water or something like that. We thought we'd um, concrete in some steps onto the base rock so it is bedrock of the mountain there um, so 
it seems easier just to build straight on top of that. I've given it a brush down and a, a rinse of water. We've put some pallet wood down as, as I think they're called formers and um, basically just to hold the, um, the material back while the, the concrete sets. Um, so we're just playing around at the moment with the layout of the steps to make sure it's a little bit logical and, and steps nicely and then yeah I'll show you the rest of what I'm getting on with. While Danny starts to get on with some of the steps, I'm going to be pruning a couple of the trees that are around by the house. This male carob tree in particular is right next to the house and one that we need to keep pruning back, mainly because we actually use this section here as a walkway to walk to the part where we're building the cabin. And when you're carrying building materials across the land, it's really annoying to have to keep stepping over overgrowth all the time. And if So I think that probably took about 10-15 minutes to do this tree. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of things to cut but it was quite a lot of new growth from this year. Um, but these new secateurs made an absolute job of it. Um, they were new, they were bought for me for my birthday, so thank you to my mum and stepdad Jake for buying me these. Um, they're a Japanese blade and they're actually really, really sharp and um, they're supposed to be made out of kind of hardened Japanese steel, which means that they stay um, a lot sharper for a lot longer um, and they're really good. They make a really satisfying snip sound as they go through the branches um, and yeah, they, they just went through the smaller ones like butter, so really, really pleased with those, so thank you. Um, if I can find them online, I'll put a link in the description down below uh, and I'll check which brand they are as well and, and write it on the screen or something here. So in the end we just got the top two done this evening. It was um, taking up a lot more cement than we'd anticipated. I think we used one on the top one and then three loads on the bottom one. So um, <laughs> I can see why people have cement mixers. Um, we've not done too much videoing. Um, we'll try and get some more tomorrow. But I was under the uh, stark realisation I had no idea what I was doing. So it was kind of a... <laughs> Have a go and then maybe I'll show you tomorrow. And with that, it's time to have a nice cold beer in the sunshine, or the last of it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so today's the next day and uh, it seems pretty dry to the touch. bad. So the plan is to fill the back like with the with the gravel and cement concrete at the back and then to to smooth it off um, with some flat stones on top. Again we'll need a bit of neatening up and pointing but it's not terrible and it should be a lot easier to get up and down. Just got to finish the, the next two today and then we should have some 
nice steps to get up and down from the car. Good morning. Yesterday's job was to um, cut a couple of the olive trees back and just kind of prune them um, a little bit ready for the year. So this morning's job is to put all of these prunings through our chipper. Um, I don't think we actually showed you the chipper that we got. We got it probably about nine months ago or so last winter um, and haven't really had much of a chance to use it yet so I don't think we put it into any of our videos yet so I'll put in some footage about um, the chipper itself the one that we got um, it's actually really really good and it seems to go through things really easily so that's great um, and this is the machine that we're going to be using so the chipper that we bought is the Forest Master FM 60D compact wood chipper you can see that it is pretty small. It's relatively light um, and you can be wheeled around with these couple of wheels here as well. It has a six horsepower uh, four stroke engine and is just petrol powered. I would say that the kind of downside of it is that the wheels um, are not very sturdy and so pulling it over rocky ground is not so good. We may upgrade these to mini kind of air filled tires or something, we're not sure. Um, but they, they do kind of rock around on their bearings a little bit, which is not great um, and means that it's not quite as stable as it probably should be.
unfortunately we can't put all of this dead wood through um, because most of it is about kind of four or five years since it was all cut down um, and it's too hard it's too dry it just turns to like powder when you put it through the machine ideally with this type of chipper you should be doing about um, kind of three to four days old cuttings as a maximum otherwise they just dry out and then they get stuck inside the machine um, if you put stuff through that's too green occasionally you should put something through that's a bit older a bit drier so that it helps it to um, kind of chew it up um, and it helps keep the blade from getting too kind of covered in in sap or uh, kind of leaf juice um, so we've been using one or two of these pieces just to kind of help push through some of the very very leafy green stuff um, but in general you shouldn't really be putting this really old deadwood through which is a shame because um, there is a new piece of legislation potentially coming in in Spain uh, which means you're not going to be able to burn your prunings it's still in uh, negotiation so we'll have to see what happens with that um, so otherwise we're gonna have to find another way of getting rid of all of this deadwood that we have all around the land any suggestions let us know in the comments there's another tree here that we started yesterday but didn't quite finish off so we're just going to finish the prunings on there but for anybody who's new to our channel and doesn't know the story of our olive trees, here is a really good example. So about five or six years ago, somebody bought this piece of land from the original owners and chopped down all of the olive trees. It's about 200 olive trees um, and sold the wood. And what happened over the course of four years before we bought it was that all of the tree growth came back on each of the stumps and the trees end up looking a little bit like this. So we've been working on kind of selecting a few of the main branches that look the strongest or look like they might be um, kind of reasonably sturdy or straight or just trying to kind of choose the best ones, the most viable ones and letting them grow for a couple of years. And then we'll see what happens and prune back to the ones which are going to be the kind of new tree. But you can really see how big these were. They were probably somewhere between 50 to 100 years old, some of them. They're absolutely massive. As you can see, there are some olives on this tree this year. Um, but it's actually been a really, really bad year for olives in general. Um, all of our neighbours and friends that we've been speaking to have all had a really bad harvest this year too. Um, or what looks to be a bad harvest. And so although the olives are on there, it's okay to prune these trees now because we're not going to harvest them this year. Um, so it's not going to damage the yield um, and we're just going to get on with it because we've got so many to do. If we don't start now, we'll never get around to them all. So this is how much material we've got. Um, now we've cleared all the suckers and done a bit of pruning. So this is just one tree. So there's a big pile here. There's some stuff from last year there. And then there's a pile around the back and a little, little one or two piles there. So if we just leave these, they end up drying out into big bundles like that. Um, or down into piles like that, that you just can't really use for anything. And um, we have to bundle to the side um, to to make pathways. And also, I suppose there's a potential fire risk there as well, because if it goes up, it's the whole the whole side of Ancal will go, because we've got them all the way down the end. So this is what happens when you put dry wood in and it doesn't chip properly. It wedges inside that and doesn't chop properly. Um, beforehand it was rattling around um, and then when we turned it off it's just got into place and then and basically got it stuck. But what that meant then was that we couldn't turn over the engine because when you turn over the engine this turns. And um, yeah, so we need to open it up, clean it out and um, we should be able to get back on with it now. So hopefully you can see all the uh, trimmings that we've got rid of. 
So that's the base of the tree now. We got through a little bit of the, the old pile from last year. It wasn't as hard as the other stuff we've been trying to put through it. And then that's it. So all that waste that was there condensed down into this tiny pile, which we can spread here quite easily. So overall, very happy. We also ran the carob clippings through with absolutely no effort at all. They went straight through the jibber. So this is how the steps have dried off overnight. They're already quite hardened off. It's going to need another layer on top just to kind of flatten everything off and make it all nice and secure with the little edging stones. But I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? So that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like the video if you haven't already and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. We're down here a bit more at the moment, so hopefully we'll get, be able to get more material out to you, show you a bit more what we're doing. And yeah, see you on the next one.